So as the days and weeks have gone on, I'm getting more and more excited, unreasonably so, for Fallout London. Fallout London is something that I've talked about on this channel several times in the past, and I'll continue to do so, especially when they have news or when they drop a new video, because I want all the bloody success in the world for this team, right? And not just with what they're creating with the actual mod itself, but with what they can do in the future, they've kind of hinted at maybe we want to start our own studio and create our own game. That's what I want. I want them to use this as a platform and as a launching pad to go on and do bigger things, creating a studio, making a game, doing something else, maybe even some of the team continually getting hired by Bethesda or even other studios. I want this level of success for the team because what they're creating is something special. And it's not just the size of the world, what they're doing with the story, the quest lines, all of the collectibles and the weapons and the factions and the costumes and everything, right? That's all part of it. But the thing that really always gets to me is how they're presenting this to us as a community. I think it's safe to say that many of us as Fallout fans haven't gotten this excited about something related to Fallout in a very long time. A very long time. Aside from maybe the Fallout TV show, but this is, you know, times 10. I haven't seen this level of excitement in the Fallout community in so long. And the way that they've been able to instill that in us as a community has been incredible. Look at the way that they produce their trailers. It's similar to BGS. It's very Bethesda-esque. The way that they slowly present things and just get us into the detail of everything that they're creating and the decisions that they're making and why they've come to where they are. It's just amazing. It's, it's brilliant community management. It's brilliant production. Everything that they're doing, I just want all the success in the world for them, right? So yes, they have dropped a recent video, and this is their final progress video for Fallout London. It's linked in the description below. I want to provide my own summary to talk about my thoughts throughout, but I do encourage you for you to check out the actual video itself. And then, yeah, I just want to provide more attention to this beautiful mod that we're going to be getting literally in just a few months on the 23rd of April. So let's jump into it. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you're new, with notifications if that's possible. But let's get into it. As I mentioned, this is their final progress video slash like one of their quarterly updates that they've been doing. And there is some news in this video that you haven't heard of yet, especially even if you watched the last announcement video that they had where they talked about the new announcement date. There's some things in here that haven't been announced yet. So first of all, what they tried to do was clarify some unanswered things from their last video. And I, as I said, I thought their last video did an amazing job, right? But there are certain things that maybe some people were unclear on and they were asking questions. And one of the biggest things was, what the hell does the word cell mean, right? If you remember that last video that they did, they talked a lot about cells and this burrow is this many cells large and the whole map is this many cells large, right? So what they tried to do in this additional video was clarify what does cell mean? Unless you're in the know with BGS's game engine or just game development in general, you might not have an actual idea. So this is what they said, right? Their world is obviously, it's made up of cells, right? And each cell is a level or a location in Bethesda Game Studios' engine. So a world space is made up of a collection of cells. And they provided this very helpful map here, where in this little red section, that's essentially the equivalent of 150 cells, right? And they even use this little helpful dot to show who you are as a character. Like if you are in that world, that's your size in comparison to the rest of the map. So if that's 150 cells and that's you as a character, and this entire map has 3,764 cells in total across all 15 boroughs. You really get a sense of how bloody big this thing is and how much we're going to have to explore. This thing is truly, it's bigger than DLC size at this stage, in my opinion. This looks absolutely incredible. And again, I think they're doing a great job getting across that sense of scale for the mod and what we're going to be able to experience come the 23rd of April, right? So this is amazing. And they reinforce that each borough really does have its own distinct feel. They've recreated traditional landmarks in London. And they also have some new things because as you would expect, things change in post-apocalyptia. It's not just going to look like London in real life. You have the big landmarks and then you have other things as well that they've worked on. And they have lots of creatures. Everything is fully nav meshed. They've done a really good job explaining this. And I think this was a good thing to include at the start of the video. And then they also answered another question as to why they didn't show any 
or uh, much, sorry, of the weapons and the collectibles in the game. And number one, they said for the weapons, there's just too much to show, right? They actually already do have a mod for Fallout 4, which includes a good number of the weapons that will be in Fallout London. So if you want to experience them, you actually can. But they also said that, you know, there's a lot more that we need to show. And they only had so much for that video. It was already 13 minutes long or whatever it was. They had a lot to announce. And I can understand them not being able to show all the weapons. And to be honest, they shouldn't. Because we should be able to experience some things as a surprise. I want to feel the surprise of picking up this weapon that I've never seen before and being like, this is freaking cool. I want to find more weapons. Keeping some things, you know, close to their chest and a little bit secret, ultimately, I think is a good thing. And when it comes to collectibles, they did at least show some more examples. So they were like, you know, you get beer mats and comics, special books, a bunch of other things. And again, these are all the things that I think a lot of us as Fallout fans are going to be excited to collect and to showcase. So I'm freaking loving everything. And then they also reiterated why they delayed the release of Fallout London. Initially, it was going to be last year in 2023, and then they had to push it back. And if you remember, the reason that they gave was there's a, there's a lot of conflict in the world. And due to those conflicts, they didn't have enough time to properly test this thing like they would like, right? So that's why they pushed it back to the 23rd of April, 2024. And they just wanted to reiterate that. And I want to say, good on them. I think any development team, whether you're a community mod team or you're a big developer, you're double A, whatever it is, right? Everyone in between, everyone should have the confidence and the capability and the just a general ability to delay something if it's not ready. And when you often go into the AAA space, sometimes it's not an option because there's there's KPIs in place, there's bu budgets in place, there's shareholders in place, and, and sometimes things are forced out the door and that's why we get crappy releases and bad games, right? So when... A decision is made to delay something, especially with how much money that that costs. Like delaying something, especially on a AAA side, can cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. We should always celebrate that, right? Sometimes there's a limit, right? And I can call out specific games that maybe delay things a little bit too long and then you wonder why it's happening. But with Fallout London, I'm not getting any signs that anything is in trouble or is at risk or anything like that. They seem like they had genuine concerns of why they had to delay things and they wanted to test it properly and good on them, we should be praising them for that. And then they talked a little bit about the voice actor updates, right? So they talked about some of the YouTubers that they've got involved to do some of the accents and the voice actor work in the game. So Call Me Kevin, for instance, is doing an Irish accent in the game for an Irish character. The leader of one of the factions, Camelot, is voiced by Gopher. Freaking love Gopher, man. If you remember Gopher, he's done so many mod videos for Fallout in the past. He's a big, big name in the Fallout YouTube community. Having Gopher's voice in there, it's so freaking iconic. I think that's going to be great. I think that's a great casting choice. Look, all I'm saying, Fallout London team, if you need an Aussie accent, there are Aussies in London. There are Aussies in, in Europe in general. Give me a call. Give your boy loan a call. I'll happily do a small line or two. But anyways, they talked about how they're getting YouTubers involved and streamers involved and general, you know, voice acting professionals involved as well. And they aren't always easy to get because oftentimes pros, of course, they want money for it. They want money for their work and they'd be paying, I assume, they'd be paying for a lot of this work. And I don't know how much money is going out to this. And this is what I think distinguishes Fallout London, maybe from other community mods. And it's, it's no fault for their own because it costs money, as I mentioned. And some people don't have the money. Some people don't have a Patreon set up to be able to fund this kind of stuff. But when we do get a mod, that is fully voice acted, we need to appreciate it because the amount of work and money and effort that goes into that, right? So it's amazing that they're getting all these voice actors in. It's amazing that when they have the story being told and being developed, that we're actually gonna be able to hear real people and not AI voices or anything like that. So kudos to them. Seems like lots of great talent is going to be involved. And then they spent the next section talking about the factions in the game and just like generally like the 3D assets when it comes to the factions and their attire, their clothes, what kind of armor they're wearing, etc. Every time they talk about the factions in this game, I keep getting blown away. In this video alone, right, and this might be all the factions in the game, but just in this video what they mentioned, it's, I'm going to count now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, at least over 10, 11 factions in the game. That's insane! For each of these factions to have their own style of clothing, their own unique feel, you know, st lore reasons, story reasons why they are a faction. A lot of thought has gone into this. A lot of time, a lot of effort, and they do a great job in breaking down all these different factions that you're going to be able to view and experience and talk to in the game, right? For instance, the Gentry. The Gentry is started as a group that's kind of like 
Do you remember Alistair Tenpenny from Fallout 3? Aristocratic, a Tenpenny vibe. They're regal, they have decadent fashion, and they have you know, finely tailored clothing with suits and waistcoats. And then you have the Camelot, which I mentioned, you know, Gopher is going to be voicing the leader of that faction. They're dressed as the post-apocalyptic Knights of London. Freaking awesome. They're regal, they have battle-worn attire, blend of medi medieval and post-apocalyptic elements. A lot of these factions naturally have a blend of post-apocalyptic elements. You kind of have to have that. You've got the Vagabond, so they have a Peaky Blinders style, if any of you watch Peaky Blinders. I was so hoping that they would find some inspiration from that show because their outfits and their attire are freaking awesome. The way they talk is awesome. I hope we get some accents that sounds like Peaky Blinders. But again, a bit of a post-apocalyptic fair, that 1920s era style of fashion with tailored suits and, and flat caps and suspenders, stuff like that. You have the Isle of Dogs Syndicate, which are kind of like the London style of mafia gangsters, vintage charm and criminal swag. You have the Tommies, which is a post-apocalyptic tribute to World War I soldiers, right? But with a bit of a modern fallout twist. So, you know, World War I British soldiers with advanced combat armor in the style of fallout. The Pistols is essentially fallout London's punk group and crew. They're rebellious. They have an edgy fashion sense with vibrant colors and ripped leather jackets, studded belts and mohawks as well, of course, and piercings. They have the roundels, which is kind of like mod style clothing. So some tailored suits, some slim fit trousers, and even parka jackets. It's like kind of like a retro cool aesthetic. You have the Miller's Men, which is like the hard-hitting, tough skinhead gang, right? No nonsense. Street smart fashion is what they use to describe it. With shaved heads, work boots, and suspenders. Sometimes you'll get slim jeans as well with plain white t-shirts. You have the Jack Tars, which are a historical British Navy gang. They proudly wear the uniform of the Royal Navy. Some of them have white sailor t-shirts. Others have like Navy bell bottom trousers and sailor hats, right? Then you have hooligans. Literally, they have radar football gangs. For those of you in America, soccer, right? But football gangs, they're wearing rugged Raider attire. They have British football and, and, and soccer color on and jerseys and whatnot. That, that is the coolest. I think that's got to be my favorite. I love that they pulled inspiration from football in the UK. It's freaking huge, right? It goes back so many years. That's a great choice. And again, I don't know if there are more factions in the game. I think these are the bulk of it, the ones that they mentioned in their last video. But they also talked about how the assets for these factions and the clothes that they're wearing and the attire are a mix of those made by the London team and also from community modders, like existing mods in the Fallout community. They've obtained permission from a lot of other creators to be able to use their assets assets in the Fallout London mod. So good on them for reaching out and obtaining permission, but also for those authors as well, giving permission for their stuff to be used in Fallout London. I think it does reinforce the fact that a lot of us see the potential in this thing. So, and, and, and it's not easy to say, yeah, I'm just going to give you my work, assets that I've worked on for hours and hours and hours. It's not an easy thing to say, yeah, here you go. You can use it, right? And I don't know if money changed hands, but that is the level of community support that I want to see in this freaking thing. Guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Fallout London. I'll continue to make videos on this thing as they announce stuff, but this is the final progress video. So I don't think we're getting anything else big, maybe aside from like a release trailer or an announced trailer until the thing actually comes out on the 23rd of April. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.